at the end of part one, this swan family had two cygnets, but one had an injury on its neck. The bad news is the injured swan did not survive. The good news is the remaining swan did survive and is hopefully still swimming in a nearby pond. The parents were now very protective of their last offspring. They are now starting to venture into the lagoon. I then checked the lagoon and I still count five. It seems that this family is doing much better in a wide open area. There goes Buffy flapping those little wings. This family is now starting to head into the main pond. Later that night, Buffy's still flapping those wings. By mid-July, the Lagoon family was down to four. Plus, there was quite a difference in just two short weeks. Turtles sometimes nest in high traffic areas. This is the entrance on Sturgis Street. We ask you to obey any sign that someone has put up. I like to check on the garden and see how it is growing. You can usually just turn around and see a heron. But you usually will not see a cormorant swimming in the brook. This bird looked like it spilled red paint under its neck. It is a rose-breasted grosbeck. Here is a good shot directly underneath. A few minutes later, I saw this morning dove sitting in a nest. These are tree swallows flying low over the water. And sometimes they skim on the water. Not far from the power plant, there is a gully between two main trails. I found this a good spot to take shots of birds. Right away, I spotted a mockingbird. Next is a familiar blue jay. This chickadee with the black on its head is a black capped chickadee. Another good find was this brown thrasher. And finally, this catbird who liked to stand on one leg. All these shots in the gully were taken within about a half hour. I then walked around the water treatment plant. Remember in part one, we saw the brass plaque stolen from this pedestal. I am happy to report that it has been replaced with a plaque not worth taking. and this monument stands next to the plaque.
The beaver dam on the brook is starting to fill in. We will be checking on the progress off and on. This couple on bikes is enjoying the view of the lagoon. Out in the lagoon, the swan family is doing flips in the water. Here is Goose 35 MC leading the troops across the causeway. Later on, the swan herds the geese back into the main pond. A red-tailed hawk was calling out two other hawks. Here is another view from the side. You can hear the hawk on the ground, plus one in the air, squawking to each other. Just watch how they soar. Now there are two in the air doing lazy circles in the sky. The hawk on the ground stayed in that tree the whole time. A few days later, the hawk was in the same area. This time, there was another hawk nearby. and they were squawking up a storm. The second one looked like it found something. It then flew on. These could be the same hawks you see in light posts along 128. This family liked to hang out on the peninsula. You can tell by all the feathers on the ground. Throughout the fall, the cygnet will slowly turn its brown feathers into white feathers. This is a good opportunity to look at the parents' web feet. Now it's time to take a nap. After the nap, the male takes a stroll down the brook. This is a funny sight, seeing a goose run down the path. It's 29 MC. You cannot have motorized boats on the pond, but sometimes you see kayaks or windsurfers.
I then checked on the lagoon swans. Now Buffy is actually showing some light brown color now. It's the end of July and the swans have grown a lot in the past month. We'll end the day with this family fishing at sunset. Along the brook, you can find an amphibian like this little frog. Or if you're lucky, maybe a big reptile like this snapping turtle. I found this one by the far bridge. I tried to follow it further downstream, but I just couldn't find it again. There are plenty of dragonflies down by the brook. Look at the end of its tail, twist and turn. The wings of this damselfly go straight back instead of out like a dragonfly. Hundreds of water bugs were fighting the current. Back on the path, you'll find some furry animals like chipmunks and rabbits. It is now August and the water level is going down. The purple loose rife is blooming and our heron is on his island. Here he is stretching and drying his wings. Look at his throat and his wing is bent forward. I'm not sure what he's trying to do here. After a few minutes, he unbends his wing. Later on, he was out fishing. And there were so many fish, he doesn't know which one to choose. So he grabs the first one he can find. Now where did all those fish go? He looks right. And then he looks left. But don't worry, he'll find some more fish. Here is a muskrat swimming underwater. He then comes up and swims away. We will see later on how this muskrat just disappears. I like this profile of the lagoon family. And now they are venturing all over the main pond. Here's a look at the garden. This is a dam from the third pond to the brook. You can hear some water underneath. 
Not far upstream is the main dam on the brook. It is really holding water back now. Look, I see a muskrat right on top. This is a view from the opposite side. Now from this angle, you can see how tall the dam is. A couple of weeks later, there was a dam under the main bridge. The swans came downstream and had to cross the dam. They look it over and decide just to climb over it. Well, easier said than done. After a struggle, he finally makes it. I got some close-up views of the Lagoon family. Where did all the bushes go? The town cleared this area, but many people think they cut down too many bushes. It's okay to have some viewing area, but birds like the cover of the bushes. These next two shots were taken in December, and you can see how sparrows like to congregate in these bushes. Here is how two ducks take a bath. The Middlesex Canal marker is along Arlington Road. Right in front of the marker, I saw these little tiny fish. September rolled around and the heron is looking for some bigger fish than that. 
He sees one. He waits patiently. And then he grabs it. Oh, that's a good size one. Watch how the heron takes off. Where I was standing, I had a little trouble turning all the way around. Then I noticed a second heron flying to another spot. Listen to the typical landing call. One more heron sequence. Watch the dragonfly land on his back. He continues walking until he feels the dragonfly. He then has it for a meal. This was the only time I ever saw him do that. A little rough going down. The nickname for this bird is a teeter-totter bird for its seesaw movement. Its real name is a spotted sandpiper. That's a kill deer in the background. This bird was a mystery to me at first. He looks like he has a punk hairdo. I wasn't sure what it was, but my bird expert, Dave Williams, identified it as a juvenile green heron. Goldfinches love sunflower seeds. But don't lean over too much. Whoa. Things are pretty stagnant by the main dam. But someone has taken the dam apart under the bridge. Let's see what's happening on the causeway. Nice catch. Minutes later, her sister catches one too. Good cast. The female mallard duck has a bright blue stripe. At the end of the day, these ducks are feasting on some flies. We will now watch the sun in the yellow glow around it, set over the pond. Thank you.
By mid-September, the swans and the geese are at peace. Before, we have seen this log used by cormorants. Now, a group of turtles have taken over. By mid-September, the water levels are getting lower. And we now see a second dam on the brook. The first week in October saw a visitor to the pond. It was a great egret. It looks similar to a great blue heron, except that it is white and has a bright yellow beak. People walking by also took notice. While I was filming these scenes, I could hear footsteps. The local high school team was using these trails to practice. Trails around the lagoon make good running paths. The next time I came upon the egret, I scared it off. I did find it by the third pond. So the next day, I staked out a hiding spot and let the egret come to me. This shows my hiding spot. It finally sensed I was watching it. And then flew off. This was the last I saw of the eagle. October is mushroom picking time. I met this man one evening. What are you going to do with these? Cook them. Going to cook them? Yeah, they are very good. Yeah? Some of them are very similar. They are poison, so you have to know which one is good. If you eat the poison, next day, six feet under. How do you tell the good ones from the bad ones? Uh, you have to see the skin and you have to see the under and uh, also the leg. The leg is different. Yeah. This is very delicious, very delicious. You yeah. cut here and you put the vinegar and I keep for uh, like uh, two weeks. <laughs> Later, man, they are perfect. Oh. You, you can cook them with the eggs, onion, <laughs> make good. some sauce. Yeah. Sounds they good. good. Yeah. Uh, Inside you see some uh, animals, b 
buy this, so I don't want to pick it up. Oh, okay. It has to be very nice and clean. I see. These where two are good. Whoop, where the cat? Okay, there's one there. And where is the other one? The other one's by the other foot there. Here? Yeah. yeah. Where is the other one? This one was there. One is behind. Oh, it's many in here. Wow. Yeah. You go to the store and you have to pay. Pay good money for those, huh? Oh, seven bucks a pound. So if you know which one good, you don't have to pay. Took me like a half hour. <laughs> All right, we'll see you later. <laughs> Yeah. There are many varieties of mushrooms. Here is just one example. Every year there seems to be more cormorants around, so they're always looking for space to dry their wings. Here are a bunch by the island. This is a typical Dry the wings routine. First, find a spot to get out of the water. Spread the wings out. Then after a few minutes, flap your wings. After that, you can turn to the other side. With the low water level, I saw this pile of debris in the pond. I'm not sure how it got there. The third pond is another hangout spot. By this time of year, the cygnets are starting to separate from their parents. The cygnets are in the main pond, while the parents are out feeding in the lagoon. But on another day, they may be close by. This shot of Buffy shows how it may be mistaken for an adult. The telltale sign is the dull beak color. Occasionally, you may run into some horses. Howdy. Hey. <laughs> Just give them room like this man is doing. I took another look at the dams on the brook. I noticed that after the second dam, the water is crystal clear. But was still murky after the first dam. Today, the third pond was a perfect mirror. Earlier, I showed a muskrat going underwater and disappearing. With the low water level, we can see the escape holes that the muskrats have dug. It's a battle between man and beast to keep some water flowing in the brook. It's not too often you can stand in the middle of the brook without getting wet. A week later, after some heavy rains, the brook is running strong again.
upstream, the dam is breached. The third pond dam is overflowing. And the small ponds are full again. Remember Buffy's little stubby wings? Well, not anymore. And this is one of Buffy's siblings. The single signet is only a few weeks older than the other two, but already you can see more white feathers. The parents have done their job, and now the offspring have to go on their own. It wasn't the best fall for color, but here are some scenes from October and November. One day near the big bridge, I was curious what the town was doing here. What they were doing is putting in a new hydrant. This was the last shot I took of the swans born this year. The other three had already disappeared, and this one found a home somewhere else, since the parents have already staked out this spot. While some birds were leaving, others were stopping by. These are bufflehead ducks. They were a little skittish at first. The next time I saw them, they were much calmer. Another type of duck that came around was the hooded merganser. One dives down and the other comes up. This bird is called an American coot, not to be confused with the European coot. 
it dives and feeds off vegetation at the bottom of ponds. This one decided to pose for us. It is stubby, has charcoal feathers, and a white beak. By the snow on the ground, you can tell it is December. A few weeks later, the pond is starting to freeze over. But many birds congregate all winter by the open water near Sturgis Street. Here are two of my fans watching this winter scene. Things must be tough if you have to eat snow. The coots are still around, looking for a morsel on the ice. Watch this running dive. This man knows how to enjoy a winter day. A downy woodpecker is looking for a meal under the bark. Here are a few winter scenes. After the ice melts, the spring cycle starts again. The hooded mergansers are still here. Close by are ringneck ducks. Later on, the lagoon swans have built a new nest. Oh, look out for that blackbird. If you look close, you can just make out a few eggs. You can also hear a woodpecker in the background. The other male swan is very aggressive in the spring. He will attack anyone. In fact, he is about to bite me in the leg. Whoa, sorry, sorry. Whoa. <laughs> Here is that attack in slow motion. I was mainly trying to protect the camera. Ouch! The fences were put up to try to contain the swan in the pond. Later that week, he was after me again. But this time, I backed off. Meanwhile, the female built a nest. Sometimes she was on the nest, but other times she was not. It turned out that no cygnets hatch from this nest. 
Here is a goose who built a nest on a boulder. By June, the lagoon swans had four cygnets. This year, they were much more protective of their young. They are about a week old, but this is the first time that I saw them. Plus, they were staying out in deeper water. After a short time out, they went back to the nest area. This is about a month later, and Dad is still being protective. Here is a red-winged blackbird and a blackbird calling side by side. This looked like an injured robin. At first he was puffing out his chest. But a few minutes later he was back to normal. There were Baltimore Orioles nesting by the pond. This one was gathering some materials for a nest. We'll watch the Orioles feeding in the trees. In June, I found two chicks getting fed. If you listen, each chick has a different tone. High and low. These are Eastern Kingbirds. A sparrow made a nest in this birdhouse. There are plenty of mallard ducklings around. This spring, I also found a large wood duck family. Just one month later, and the ducklings are almost as big as the mother. There was also plenty of goslings around. Now this is a rare sight a blue heron sitting down in the middle of the day. This is much more typical. That's the song of the yellow warbler. I turned around and spotted the two distinctive black rings of a killdeer. 
He's out checking the garden. This is a cat bird checking out some calls of other birds. In the beginning of June, this may look like a calm scene, but beneath the surface are spawning carp. On a sad note, this was the last shot I took of the aggressive swan. It is ironic that he was preventing me from filming a turtle that was near the nest. Later that spring, he was killed by a snapping turtle. There was a good chance that this is the one. This is very near where the nest was. Now, the female swan has to swim this pond by herself. Thank you.